What is the meaning of Nema the thread? Now as we observe the nematoda, here three germ layers are present called triploblastica. During the development, the blastopore becomes mouth hence called protostomia. In the nematoda, what type of symmetry is present bilateral symmetry? With the help of one division plane, we are getting the antimeres. What are the important characters of nematoda? In the nematoda, the body is covered and protected by cuticle. The cuticle is mainly made by collagen. The collagenous cuticle is present only in case of nematoda. In the nematoda, majority of animals are unisexual, male and female separate. Only one animal is bisexual, that is Cynorhabditis. How we can identify the male animal? In male animal, the posterior end is pointed and curved. Whereas in case of female, the posterior end is pointed and straight. In case of male animal, the cloaca, copulatory spicules and copulatory papillae are present. What is the function of copulatory papillae? At the time of copulation, they bring sexual excitement in case of the female. What is the function of copulatory spicules? At the time of copulation, the male with the help of copulatory spicules release sperms into the female body. In case of nematoda, what is the body organization, organ system body organization? In addition to, in the phylum nematoda, we have to observe tube within tube body organization. The body wall is in the form of outer tube, whereas the elementary canal is in the form of another tube. From nematoda onwards, as we observe the elementary canal, the elementary canal has mouth and anus. Whereas, in case of platy elementis, in the class turbal area, only in few examples, mouth and anus present. But from nematoda onwards, up to human being, we have to observe a complete elementary canal. From the nematoda onwards, what type of organization we have to observe? tube within tube body organization. Another important character of nematoda is the tissues are cellular or syncytial. What is the meaning of this cellular and syncytial? This is characterized by species specific number of cells or nuclei. What is the meaning of species specific number of nuclei or cells? In the nematoda, each species having specific number of cells and specific number of nuclei. What is the reason for that condition? The reason is we call it as utility. What is the meaning of utility? In the nematoda, in the adult stage, the somatic cells do not undergo any division. Only the germ cells can undergo division. In the phylum nematoda, what type of digestion is going to observe? In the phylum nematoda, generally we have to observe the inter or extracellular digestion. What is meant by inter or extracellular digestion? The digestion takes place outside the cell inside the elementary canal. In the phylum nematoda, what about the excretion? The excretion is brought by excretory glands or excretory canal or both. In case of larval stage, what is the excretory cell? That we call it as the Renetti cell. What about the adult stage? In the adult stage, H-shaped excretory canal is present. What about the nervous system? The nervous system is intraepithelial. That means the components of nervous system are present in the epithelial cells. Now, as we observe the development of nematodes, the male and female will undergo copulation. After completing the copulation, generally the male animal dies. As we observe the female animal, in the body of the female animal, the fertilization takes place. Generally, here the females are oviparous. But here one exception is present, that we call it as Dracunculus. That we call it as Dracunculus. As we observe the Dracunculus, it is the viviparous. What is the another example is Ocararia bancrafti. The Ocararia bancrafti is oviviparous. Remaining all nematodes are oviparous. Now, as we observe the other characters of the nematoda, in all nematodes at the anterior end of the body, what are the sense organs are present? The amphids. 
what about the posterior and the sense organs are called phasmids what is the unit for the classification of phylum nematoda the presence or absence of phasmids and now by taking these phasmids as a units phylum nematoda is classified into two subclasses one we call it as a phasmidia and the second one we call it as phasmidia now as we observe the a phasmidia in the a phasmidia the amphids are various shapes in the a phasmidia the phasmids are absent in the a phasmidia majority are free living and some are parasites one best example for the a phasmidia is trichinella what about the phasmidia in the phasmidia amphids are present but they are poor like in the phasmidia what are present the well developed phasmids are present what are the examples for the phasmidia one example is ascaris the second one is ocaria bancrafti the third one is ankylostoma and the fourth one is drakenculus etc all these are come under the phasmidia and now regarding the mc point of view what are the important questions in the phylum nematoda as we observe the nematoda here the body organization is not complicated why the body organization is not complicated the mesoderm the muscles and connective tissue are completely confined to the body wall whereas as we observe the elementary canal only the pharynx is muscular and the remaining part is non muscular so that here the elementary canal does not perform any peristaltic movements and now as we observe the important character of nematoda in order to kept one animal under nematoda what is the important character the pseudocoelom what is meant by pseudocoelom the body cavity is not lined by mesodermal epithelia this pseudocoelom is the derivative of blastocoel what is the other name primary body cavity or segmentation cavity here no circulatory system how the nutrients are transported the pseudocoelomic fluid performs transportation and gives support and the pseudocoelomic fluid acts as hydraulic or hydrostatic skeleton these are the important characters and classification of phylum nematoda now we have to discuss the next one we call it as annelida the next phylum we call it as annelida now as yes, we observe the characters of annelida what is the taxonomic position of annelida the phylum the word annelida was proposed by jb lamarck and we know very well the word biology also proposed by jb lamarck annelida word also proposed by jb lamarck philosophy geologic big book also written by jb lamarck inheritance of acquired characters use and disuse principle influence of environment all these points are explained by jb lamarck now as we observe the annelida in the annelida all are triploblastic three germ layers are present and in the phylum annelida what type of coelom is present a true coelom what is meant by true coelom the coelom externally internally covered and protected by mesodermal epithelia so in the m set what is the first eucelomate phylum annelida but in case of annelida arthropoda mollusca the coelom is formed by splitting of mesoderm such a type of coelom we call it as schizocoelom so what is the first schizocoelomate phylum annelida here also what type of symmetry is present the bilateral symmetry in case of platy helminthes nematoda annelida arthropoda mollusca during the course of development the blastopore becomes mouth so called protostomians and now what are the protostomians regarding the m set point of view platy helminthes nematoda annelida arthropoda and mollusca now in the annelida what are the first characters developed true segmentation first developed in the annelida what about the platy helminthes in the platy helminthes in the class cystoda we have to observe the pseudo metamerism what is the meaning of true metamerism or a true segmentation in all true segmented animals the new segments added from the posterior end of the body now 
in the annelida the closed blood vascular system first developed what is meant by closed blood vascular system the blood flows in definite blood vessels that we call it as closed blood vascular system closed blood vascular system first developed in annelida true segmentation first developed in annelida what about the cephalization already we learned one point cephalization first developed in the turbal area but in the turbal area the cephalization is moderate whereas in the phylum annelida the cephalization is true at the anterior end of the body a distinct head with sense organs is present such a true cephalization first developed in the phylum annelida and now what are the other characters of phylum annelida in the annelida as we observe the body wall the body wall is dermomuscular what is the meaning of dermomuscular the body wall consisting dermis and muscles what type of muscles are present circular and longitudinal muscles are present and now in the phylum annelida as we observe the body wall the body wall consisting the cuticle here the cuticle having one is gelatin collagen and mucopolysaccharides but in case of nematoda in the cuticle what is only present the collagen is only present but here the cuticle consisting the collagen gelatin and mucopolysaccharides and now in the phylum annelida what are the main locomotory organs the setae the setae are made by chitin they are derived from ectoderm but in case of some annelids what are the locomotory organs the bilobed structure called parapodia on parapodia many setae are present now in the phylum annelida what is the main respiratory pigment that is hemoglobin in case of phylum annelida as we observe the circulatory system in the circulatory system what type of cells are totally absent the rbc absent though rbc absent what is present the hemoglobin the hemoglobin is dissolved in the blood plasma but in case of vertebrates without rbc there is no hemoglobin but in case of invertebrates without rbc hemoglobin present the best example is annelida in case of annelida what type of digestion is present the digestion is mainly inter or extracellular digestion takes place outside the cell and inside the alimentary canal what about the respiratory organs generally in the annelids the main respiratory organ is the mucus loaded body wall exchange of gases takes place through general body surface but in case of polychaetes the vascularized parapodia also act as gills but these are not the true gills the vascularized parapodia act as gill and they help in the respiration in the phylum annelida during the course of development we have to observe the formation of egg case for the formation of egg case what is required the clitellum is required in some annelids the clitellum is permanent in some annelids the clitellum is totally absent in some annelids the clitellum develops only during the breeding season what is the function of clitellum it produces egg case or cocoon now as we observe the remaining characters majority of annelids are bisexual and polychaeta that is the only unisexual in majority of annelids development what is absent the larva is absent the absence of larva that we call it as development is direct but in case of polychaeta the development is indirect having what type of larva that we call it as trochophore larva in the phylum annelida during the development what is the cleavage that we call it as holoblastic what is meant by holoblastic every time the zygote completely divides and the cleavage is unequal what is meant by unequal cleavage because of the cleavage two different kinds of cells will be formed one we call it as macromeres and the second one we call it as micromeres and the cleavage is also said to be spiral and the cleavage is also determinate what is meant by determinate cleavage the feta blastomere is known earlier and now what about the nervous system in all annelids as we observe the nervous system around pharynx what is present the nerve ring 
what type of nerve card is present the double ventral solid nerve card on nerve card how the ganglia are present they are arranged segmentally such type of phylum annelida how it reproduces excretion in all annelids what are the main excretory organs the nephridia what are the functions of nephridia the nephridia perform osmoregulation excretion and reabsorption of water in addition to the nephridia what are the other excretory cells the chlorogen cells what is the main function of chlorogen cells only excretion what is the difference between nephridia and chlorogen cells the nephridia derived from ectoderm whereas the chlorogen cells are derived from the mesoderm here the free chlorogen cells are called ileocytes what is the difference between the chlorogen cells and ileocytes chlorogen cells are stationary whereas ileocytes are free moving now such phylum annelida is classified into how many classes three classes what is the unit for the classification of annelida we call it as the ct phylum annelida is classified into three classes one we call it as polyketa second one we call it as oligoketa and the third one we call it as hyrudinia but regarding the m set point of view archaea annelida that is also one class of phylum annelida but we are not discussing separately the class archaea annelida the main classes are polyketa oligoketa and hyrudinia now in these three classes what is the biggest class polyketa what is the second biggest class oligoketa now in the polyketa some animals live in burrows some animals live in tubes majority of polyketes are marine forms as we observe the oligoketa in the oligoketa all annelids are fossorial they live in burrows what about the hyrudinia it is very very peculiar in this class the body is dorsoventrally flattened in the class hyrudinia limited number of segments are present number of segments are 33 and each segment is subdivided they are called annuli now as we observe the polyketa in the polyketa all are unisexual the male and the female separate in the polyketa the cephalization is very very distinct whereas in the oligoketa and hyrudinia the cephalization is totally absent in the polyketa what are the main locomotory organs parapodia with ctae whereas in oligoketa what are the locomotory organs ctae whereas in case of hyrudinia such type of structures are totally absent in hyrudinia what are the structures responsible for the attachment and locomotion suckers how many suckers are present two suckers are present in case of polyketa the clitellum is totally absent in oligoketa the clitellum is permanent in hyrudinia the clitellum develops during the breeding season in case of polyketa as we observe the gonoducts gonoducts what are the gonoducts the vasa deferentia and oviducts are totally absent because of the absence of gonoducts in the class polyketa the gametes release into the marine water with the help of what type of structures the metanephridia in case of oligoketa and hyrudinia the gonoducts gonopores are permanent and in case of polyketa the development takes place outside the body in the marine water here in the development the larval form present that we call it as trochophore now what is one example for the polyketa neris catapteras and next unis etc all these are the examples of polyketa as we observe the polyketa in the polyketa there is no question of formation of egg case or cocoon in case of oligoketa egg case cocoon present in case of hyrudinia also egg case or cocoon present but what is the difference in case of oligoketa from the body the sperms and ova release into the egg case whereas in case of hyrudinia here what is present the copulatory organ that we call it as serous the serous is also present in the platyhelminthes with the help of copulatory organ because of the presence of copulatory organ 
in case of irudinia the fertilization is internal so in the irudinia the zygotes directly release into the egg case or cocoon now in these three classes as we observe the irudinia commonly known as leeches here all the annelids are commonly known as the earthworms here the annelids are commonly known as the brazil worms now in the class of irudinia the coelom is occupied by what type of tissue that we call it as botryoidal tissue according to some persons what is the function of botryoidal tissue nutritive in function but majority opinion is the botryoidal tissue function is excretion now in case of m set what is the function of botryoidal tissue one option is excretion one option is nutrition the best option is the excretion now in the class of hyrudinia all are carnivores in the hyrudinia all are ectoparasites as we observe the hyrudinia these are ectoparasites in their saliva what is present an anticoagulant that we call it as hyrudin as these animals suck the blood from the host these are called the sanguivorous here one exception is in the oligoketa chubifex such earthworm lives in the fresh water what is the largest earthworm megascolides what is the smallest earthworm ketogaster in south india what is the longest earthworm dravida but we have to discuss generally the feritima possuma under the genus feritima possuma how many species are present in near about 500 species but in india how many species are present 18 what is the important species we discussed regarding the oligoketa the feritima possuma and here hyrudinia one example is hemadipsa acanthobdilla all these are the examples of class hyrudinia now we have to discuss the next one is phylum arthropoda the next one we call it as phylum arthropoda now as we observe the phylum arthropoda what is the taxonomic position of arthropoda in the kingdom animalia that we call it as phylum and uh, now regarding the mc point of view what are the important questions in the arthropoda in all the aspects what are what is the biggest phylum the arthropoda now among invertebrates what are the invertebrates are true terrestrial invertebrates arthropoda why these are adapted for the terrestrial environment in their body water conservation methods are present what is one example for these methods in all arthropods the body is covered and protected by chitinous cuticle that prevents the loss of water and the second adaptation is presence of malphysian tubules they perform osmoregulation and excretion and the third adaptation is the rectal papillae they play an important role in the reabsorption of water and in the thoracic and abdominal region what are present the spiracles they also play an important role in the conservation of water and the arthropodan animals generally excrete hypertonic excretory material to conserve the water by all these methods arthropodan animals are adapted for the terrestrial environment in the arthropoda what type of muscles first developed they are called voluntary muscles what is the other name of voluntary muscles striped or striated muscles how the voluntary muscles they are in the form of the bundles they act as levers they play an important role in the process of locomotion these voluntary muscles are attached to endoskeleton structures here what are the endoskeleton that we call it as epidemes in the phylum arthropoda as we observe the body wall in the body wall the first one we call it as cuticle and the second one we call it as epidermis and the third one we call it as basement membrane the cuticle is classified into epicuticle exocuticle and endocuticle what is the importance of epicuticle it is very very important to allow only carbon dioxide but not the water so the epicuticle is called the gateway of carbon dioxide 
what about the exo cuticle here only the pigments are present this exo cuticle is in the form of sclerides at the time of molting name the layer that removes first that we call it as endo cuticle now what about the epidermis in the epidermis variety of cells are present one is the glandular cells the second one is trichogen cells the third one is tarmogen cells and the fourth one we call it as inocytes here regarding the m set what are the cells deeply arranged in the epidermis inocytes what is the main function of inocytes that we call it as the wax and now in the phylum arthropoda egg diseases it is also called molting what is the significance of egg diseases regarding the m set point of view the growth as long as the cuticle is present there is no growth so periodically the cuticle is cast off that process we call it as egg diseases or molting in case of arthropoda what about the elementary canal the elementary canal is elongated and coiled in addition to the elementary canal what are present digestive glands here one important point regarding the m set point of view the digestive glands first developed in the phylum annelida now in the phylum arthropoda the elementary canal is longer than that of the body so here and there the elementary canal is coiled associated with the elementary canal what are the excretory organs the malpighian tubules in the elementary canal only one valve is present that we call it as the stomodial valve how many sphincters are present only one sphincter now in the phylum arthropoda what about the circulatory system it is purely open type what is meant by open type the blood flows in the sinuses or spaces in case of arthropoda what type of cells are absent rbc absent hemoglobin also absent but in some arthropods what is the respiratory pigment the copper containing hemocyanin now as we observe the arthropoda what are the excretory organs one we call it as malpighian tubules the second one we call it as coxal glands the third one we call it as antennary or green glands what about the respiratory organs in arthropods respiration is by trachea but in some small arthropods the respiration is through general body surface in aquatic forms gills book gills and in some animals the book lungs are also present now in the phylum arthropoda what about the nervous system in case of annelida around pharynx nerve ring is present but in case of phylum arthropoda the nerve ring is present around esophagus present in the head region in all invertebrates what type of nerve cord is present the double ventral solid nerve cord on nerve cord how the ganglia are arranged segmentally arranged in the phylum arthropoda majority are unisexual but here one exception is present in the class crustacea as we observe unisexual and bisexual animals are present in the phylum arthropoda what type of egg is present that we call it as centrolecithal what is meant by centrolecithal egg in the center of egg what is present the yolk is present what type of cleavage is present the meroblastic cleavage now we are getting a doubt what is the meroblastic cleavage where yolk absent there the cytoplasm and nucleus will undergo divisions such type of cleavage we call it as meroblastic cleavage now in the arthropoda during the development what are present the larval stages are present so the development is said to be indirect now such phylum arthropoda is classified into how many subphyla three subphyla the first one we call it as trilobita and the second one we call it as kili serrata and the third one we call it as mandibulata as we observe the trilobita the trilobita members are exclusively marine they were present in the paleozoic era in the trilobita the body is divided into three lobes one we call it as head and the second one we call it as thorax and the third one we call it as abdomen that we call it as pygidium in the trilobita what type of appendages are present biramus each appendage divides into two that we call it as biramus appendage here one example is triarthrus and dalmanides the second subphylum we call it as chelicerata now here one important one is 
name the arthropods in which antennae totally absent chile serrata. The subphylum chile serrata, the body is divided into prozoma and opisozoma. In the prozoma, 6 segments, in the opisozoma, 13 segments, totally 19 segments are present. Such chile serrata, why it got such name? In the chile serrata, the first pair of appendages are modified into chile serrata. They help in the feeding. So, got the name chile serrata. Such chile serrata is classified into two classes. One we call it as Gyphozora and the second one we call it as Arachnida. What is the peculiarity of Gyphozora? Here, the genital operculum is present. Here, what are the respiratory organs, the book gills? Here, the body is divided into prosoma, mesozoma, metazoma. The metazoma ends as telson. In case of arachnida, all are terrestrial animals. In the arachnida, the body is divided into prosoma, mesozoma, metazoma. But here, what is absent? Telson absent. In the arachnida, four pairs of legs are present, so called octopoda. In the arachnida, in some animals, keely serre and pectins are present and in some arachnida what are also present the pedipals but in the arachnida one exception is spider in the spider instead of chelicere what are present the poisonous class are present now in the arachnida one vv paris cannibalistic example is present that we call it as the scorpion its scientific name is palamnius the scorpion is viviparous and it is an example of cannibalism. Now, mandibulata. What is the biggest subphylum in the phylum Arthropoda? The mandibulata. In the subphylum mandibulata, how many classes are present? Four classes. One we call it as crustacea. It is followed by chylopoda, followed by diplopoda and insecta. Now, as we observe the insecta, in the class insecta, three pairs of legs are present. Hence, it is called hexapoda. What is the study of insects in entomology? Now, as we observe the crustacea, in the crustacea also, biramous appendages are present. Now, regarding the M set point of view, what are the present day living arthropods having biramous appendages, crustacea? What are the extinct arthropods having biramous appendages? That is trilobita subphylum. In the class crustacea, the genital pores are paired. In the class crustacea, one more important character is two pairs of antennae are present. One pair of antennae are elongated, one pair of antennae are very small, they are called antennules. Now, in the class crustacea, the head and thorax combinedly termed as the cephalothorax. In the head region, how many segments are present? Five. In the class crustacea, what are the excretory organs? Green glands. Why they are called antennary glands? Because they are present at the base of antennae. What is the important larval form in the class crustacea? That is the nucleus. Now in the class crustacea, generally the respiration is brought by gills. But in the class crustacea, in some crustacean animals, the body is very, very small. In those animals, the exchange of gases takes place through general body surface. And now, chylopoda and diplopoda, these two are combinedly termed as myriapoda. Now, as we observe the chylopoda and diplopoda, in the chylopoda, the body is dorsoventrally flattened. In diplopoda, the body is cylindrical. In the chylopoda, the segmentation is very, very, very clear. In case of diplopoda, the segmentation is not clear. In case of chylopoda and diplopoda, what are the respiratory organs? Trachea. In chylopoda and diplopoda, the respiration is brought by trachea and excretion is brought by malphysian tubules. As we observe the chylopoda, these are purely carnivores. Whereas, in case of diplopoda, these are detritus herbivore. It means they take the dead and decaying plant matter only. In the class chylopoda, each segment having one pair of legs with class. But in case of diplopoda, such type of class for the legs absent. In the diplopoda, 
each segment that means the body is divided into the body is divided into head and the trunk particularly in the trunk each segment is having two pairs of the legs hence got the name diplopoda in the chylopoda diplopoda in these two classes in some animals the genital pore is anterior progoniata and in some animals the genital pore is at posterior that we call it as opisthogoniata what about the insecta in the adult stage as we observe the insecta in the adult stage how many segments are present 19 but in the embryonic stage how many segments are present 20 segments are present here what are the main excretory organs the malphysian tubules what are the respiratory organs trachea all are unisexual as we observe the development in the development the larval stages are present for example in cockroach what is the larva that is the nymph in bed bug the larva is nymph in pediculus the larva is nymph in case of insecta what are number of legs responsible for the locomotion three pairs of legs what is the main excretory product the uric acid now these are the important characters regarding the nematoda annelida and arthropoda now we have to discuss some important bits regarding the nematoda annelida and arthropoda we have to discuss some important bits with reference to nematoda annelida and arthropoda now what is the first one in the absence of blood vascular system the nutrients from gut circulate in the body of nematodes through the pseudocylomic fluid because here there is no circulatory system so that the pseudocylomic fluid performs the transportation what is the next question the second one we call it as number of mouths occur in the life cycle of nematodes in all nematodes during the development the larvae of nematodes undergoes how many moultings four moultings after completing the four moultings we are getting the adult or the mature stage now go for the third question what is the third question spiny structures that help in the copulation present near the cloacal aperture of male nematodes in all male nematodes at the cloacal region two copulatory spicules are present in some only one copulatory spicule is present in some two equal copulatory spicules in some two unequal copulatory spicules such copulatory spicules are called the pineal city now go for the next question lonar periodicity is exhibited in the reproduction of what is meant by lonar periodicity in some animals the reproduction is associated with different stages of moon that we call it as the lunar periodicity exhibited by unis commonly known as palaloam now the next question is locomotory structures in polyketa in polyketa the locomotion is mainly brought by bilobed parapodia on parapodia many ct are present so the parapodia with many ct is the locomotory structures in polyketa now go for the sixth question in the sixth question the gill like structures in some polychaetes for example in the polychaetes the vascularized parapodia help in the respiration whereas only parapodia help in the locomotion now the seventh question is trilobites this is the first subphylum in the phylum arthropoda the trilobites nowadays they were absent they were abandoned in which era the paleozoic era now the next question is the eighth question what is the habitat of trilobites all trilobites are exclusively confined to the marine water now the next question is by ramus appendages we already discussed what are the by ramus appendages each appendage divides into two the by ramus appendages present in the extinct arthropods that is trilobita and present day living arthropods class crustacea now the next one is body is trilobed why the subphylum got the name trilobita in trilobita animals the body is divided into three lobes head thorax and pygidium that is also called abdomen what is the next question now nerilla we already discussed this one in the phylum annelida four classes are present but actually we discussed polyketa 
Irudinia and Oligoketa. What are the primitive annelids that we call it as Archie annelida? Under Archie annelida, the Nerilla present under Archie annelida. Now the next question is In small crustaceans, respiratory gas exchange through. In crustaceans, what are the main excretory organs? Gills. But in the class crustacea, in small sized animals, the respiration takes place through general body surface. Now, what are the main respiratory organs? The body wall in small crustaceans. Now, the next question. Assertion. Segmentation in arthropoda is heteronomous. New segments in arthropods are formed at the posterior end. Now, what is the answer for this question? In case of arthropoda, the segmentation is heteronomous. What is meant by heteronomous? Here, the head, thorax, abdomen, dissimilar in their size, shape and function. Now, in case of arthropoda, the new segments added from posterior end, from annelida to human being, new segments added from the posterior end. Such type of segmentation we call it as true metamerism or true segmentation. So, for this question, the correct answer is both are correct or he explains A. Now, the next one is, in the above, progoniata arthropods are. Now, what is the answer for this question is, progoniata. What is the answer for this question is, progoniata means the genital pore present at the anterior end of the body. Now, here the answer is, one example is spirobolus and the second one we call it as jolus. Spirobolus and jolus, they come under the diplopoda. Now, the next question is, which of the following is applicable to arthropoda with pectins? Now, the answer is viviparous. Now, which of the following is applicable to the arthropoda with pectins? We discussed this bit under the class arachnida. In the class arachnida, only one example for the VV paras that we call it as scorpion. In the body of scorpion, what are present? The chili serae and next pectins are present. What is the function of pectins? They help for the food collection as well as they act as sense organs. What is the next question? Now, assertion. In arthropods, appendages provide mechanical advantage for locomotion. Reason, appendages are jointed and act as lever systems. Now, as we observe the arthropoda, in the arthropoda, what type of muscles first developed? The striped or striated or voluntary muscles. They are in the form of the bundles. They act as the levers. These bundles of the muscles attached to the endoskeleton and helps indirectly in the locomotion. So, both are correct or explain C A. Now, what is the next question? Wrong pair in the following is, the first one is palimon. Palimon means fresh water prawn. Here what are the sense organs, the statocyst that is the correct, Kylopa, kylopoda. One pair of cloudy appendages for each trunk segment. In the class kylopoda, body divided into segments, each segment having cloudy appendages that is also correct. Third one, diplopoda. Here, each segment having two pairs of legs but without class. Here, the third one is diplopoda, two pairs of cloudy appendages that is the wrong one. Fourth one, lepisma, three pairs of legs in the thorax that is correct because the lepisma, it is an insect come under the class insect. For this question, what is the wrong option is the third one. Now, we go for the next question. Fasmids are absent, but excretory glands are present in the members of. We know very well, phylum nematoda is classified into A phasmedia and phasmedia. In the A phasmedia, what are absent? Phasmids are absent. In the phasmedia, what are present? Phasmids are present. Now, here what is the answer? The second answer. Phasmids are absent, but excretory glands are present in the members of adenophoria. What is the other name of adenophoria? That is A phasmedia. Now we go for the next question. Study the following progoniata, opisogoniata, malphysian tubules, saccate nephridia means sac like nephridia, two pairs of maxillae, one pair of maxillae. Now these characters are related to spirobolus. Now what is the answer for this question? As we observe this question, the answer is the second one. Here, spirobolus, 
that is come under the class diplopoda. In the class diplopoda, the genital pore present at the anterior end, that we call it as progoniata. And in the class diplopoda, the excretion is by malphysian tubules. And in the class diplopoda, how many pairs of maxillae are present? One pair. Now the next question is, H-shaped excretory system is seen in. Now, in the phylum nematoda, as we observe the excretion, the excretion is in the form of excretory cell, renate cell, or in the form of excretory gland, or in the form of H-shaped excretory canal. Now, the H-shaped excretory canal is present in the phylum nematoda. Here, one example is the pinworm that is come under the class Phasmidia. These are the important questions related to Nematoda, Anilida, Ardhropoda. In the next class, we have to discuss Malaska and Echinodermata.